Hello my soccer universe, the Women's World Cup is almost upon us, starting uh, next Thursday, the 20th of July, early in the morning if you're living in Europe. And I thought it is time to give you just a little bit of preview from my part, you know, uh, who is playing in the tournament, uh, what's the tournament format, who are the favorites, and also a little bit about the jerseys and how I'm gonna going to treat this World Cup. Uh, once it gets underway. But before that, let's talk about where the tournament is being played. It's of course in Australia and New Zealand with half of the tournament being split up into New Zealand, the other half into Australia. And this goes even all the way to the semi-finals, which to me is a little bit of a downside of this tournament. Speaking of downside, for me, the Women's World Cup is a tournament I've been following at least since 2003, uh, watching a final and following it uh, with results and you know, re reading up, you know, maybe not at the same level as a men's tour tournament, but with interest and I always wanted to know what's going on. Having said that, this World Cup makes it really, really, really hard. The women's game is bigger than ever before and we are playing it now uh, at a time where most people won't be able to watch at least here in Europe and the big story over the last few years is that it is not only Germany and the Scandinavian nations anymore no also the big Euro European nations are being on a rise and uh, fielding competitive teams so the women's game in Europe has grown considerably even since the last World Cup uh, and therefore it is a shame that uh, the games are played not only at kickoff times that are not very conducive to watching because it's either in the middle of the night or during working hours because it's in the morning. However, I have less a problem with that. I have a much bigger problem with the fact that the time slot within the year, the end of the tournament bumps right up against the beginning of the domestic season in the top five leagues. In addition, uh, the beginning of the tournament also clashes, you know, this is a person for me, with the start of the domestic season in Austria. It also clashes uh, for me with my vacation, which we'll get to it a little bit later. Um, but I really feel we had now this huge extended break. Yes, there was a Gold Cup that I didn't really follow. We had some international breaks, but fit the World Cup, just push it two weeks earlier. And there would be much more attention put on it. Don't have it clash with the start of the domestic seasons because those will grab always a whole lot more headlines. And that's why I feel uh, the Women's World Cup is really, really undersold this time around. Not only is it from a European perspective, and please don't get me wrong, I think it's great that Australia and New Zealand have um, this tournament. But it is already non-attractive times, but that would not be the big uh, stumbling uh, block because, you know, uh, you can definitely work around that if you're a real fan and maybe if you want to boost the women's game, there are ways to work around it. But that it is so much then su sucked into that to, o to overlap with the start of the domestic season, that to me is a real scheduling error. That's my personal opinion there. However, on the pole pole side, I said the women's game is as big as it ever has been. We have the first time 32 teams. And while initially I thought, is this not a little bit too much? And especially when you see, especially uh, if you look at the pot four teams, uh, potentially, because there's still a little bit of a gap uh, in there. But on the other side, it gives so many teams the exposure and, you know, the experience that they need. And for that, I find this very, very exciting. However, since there is a gap, if we look here at the draw, uh, we already see that um, there is, and you can, the color code coding is basically how strong these teams are rated. Uh, you can see that there are many groups where there's a clear cut between the top two and the bottom two. We have only have a couple of uh, groups that are competitive. The most competitive is probably group A, thanks to New Zealand being kind of a lowly rated rate team we have. In Group D, China and Denmark uh, tussling for a second spot. Um, group G is probably uh, Sweden up top, but then Italy, Argentina could tussle for a second place, and same thing between South Korea and Colombia. We also see here already in Group Stage draw all the groups to the left are the New Zealand groups, and all the groups to the right are the Australia groups, uh, which 
has another, um, as, as we see in a bit, uh, an, another effect. Uh, but if we see now how these groups are, uh, should pan out according to uh, these ratings, and you can already, already already guess from the color coding, but here it's spelled out again, we'll have Norway winning uh, the group ahead of New Zealand, Australia ahead of Canada, Spain ahead of Japan, England ahead of Denmark, with I think China could do something there, because you know, um, China is not that far away from Australia, so they might have some home support. Same thing actually goes for Japan as well. Uh, United States and Netherlands, I would still think the Netherlands are a better team than Portugal, but Portugal has a very uh, prominent rise as of late. France, Brazil, they meet again ahead of the two CONCACAF teams. Yes, how did two CONCACAF teams end up in one group? It's because of the weird play of seeding they had, because uh, I think Panama was not qualified when the draw was made and they should have got, and they were assigned to a different confederation there. Interesting stuff for sure. Uh, then I said Group G is probably a rather uh, even one. I think on the day Italy can hurt Sweden, but Sweden will still be the better, better team. But also Argentina could hurt Italy. So that's an interesting one. In German, South Korea, Colombia. I would give it a little bit to South Korea, although I haven't seen much of South Korean women at the Women's World Cup so far. But hey, another nation that is on the rise. As I said, all the Australia groups and uh, all the Australia groups make up one finalist. All New Zealand groups make another finalist. That's why we have a rather weird bracket. The first, uh, the winner of Group A is not playing against the second place team from Group B. No, Group B is Australia group. Group C, we need to go to the New Zealand group. So we would have Norway against Japan, with Japan actually being the favorite there uh, if we go by the book, if you like. Then we have the United States against Italy. And then again, from those four groups, we have also uh, the other teams that add, add, add once in the second quarter. And Spain, New Zealand, Sweden, Netherlands, which is a replay of the semifinal last time around. Those two teams have been kind of evenly matched. Sweden would, would be favorites, which would mean we have Japan against the USA. Repeat of World Cup finals in 2011 and 2015. So that's a big one. That was a huge rivalry, although now uh, the US is far ahead there. Uh, Spain against Sweden, new power against old power. And it's of course Spain, who are one of the dark horses that would go on there playing the US, where they will be outsiders for sure. In the lower quadrant, uh, Australia should actually get past Denmark. I think this Denmark team is a little bit on the down, down the turn. And Australia will have home field advantage. For me, this is a team that is very hard to uh, predict, to be honest. Um, as you see, I have them going relatively far in this tournament, but it's mostly due to home field advantage. Uh, with France against South Korea, that should be a rather clear one. Then England against Canada is another rather interesting tie, I would say. And Germany, Brazil, if that doesn't tickle your fancy, I don't know whatever will. will. I feel that the Australia part, especially the lower half, is rather loaded. Um, we have Australia against France. That's a toss-up with probably home field advantage could carry through for uh, Australia. And England against Germany, a replay of the Euro final. Model has Australia against England. That would be a barnstormer. Play the stadium of Australia at the moment. I have England going through, uh, meeting the US in the final, where the US will be favorites. The US are still are the big favorites overall, as we can see already in the full uh, pre preview here. US, then I think Germany, England, Spain are kind of the second tier. Those are the contenders. I think the winner of this World Cup will be among those four nations. Uh, the question is, will any of the European teams, can they take on the United States? Australia, thanks to the draw, have probably not a bad chance of making it to the final. Uh, but we got to see how, how the, it will pan out for them there. Um, I think those, to me, are the teams that can win it. Um, United States, of course, are the big favorites. However, I have to say, being a two-time defending champion, winning it for a third time in a row, we've never seen that at a FIFA tournament. So I would actually think it's one of the Europeans that win it. And if I would bet, not, but if I would, I think I would say England is the team to beat. Uh, despite not having good form as of late, Sarina Wiegmann is so experienced. She won the Euros the last two times, once with, the, with her home country Netherlands, now with England. She was in the final of the last World Cup. I can very well see her uh, going for this uh, World Cup as well. Now, 
uh, we see the, f the schedule for the first uh, round of matches and you see already another issue that I have is not only the kick of times but there are no fixed slots it is rather random overall it has to do with weird time zones but that FIFA didn't did say we have these three kickoff slots and you there you have to play is something I do not un understand. You see, for instance, the first on the, on the first match we have both New Zealand and Australia playing the op opening match with New Zealand against Norway. Uh, all already, as we saw, one that could decide who will win the group. Uh, Nine o'clock in the morning and twelve thirty. I think those are reasonable times. But then the next one is four thirty seven, nine thirty, uh, and then no twelve thirty game. Then it's three o'clock, nine nine o'clock, eleven thirty. There is no rhythm there which makes it even harder to follow this tournament. This is a real shame uh, there. Um, I think that most of the games are rather um, pre-decided, but I think a few that, that I want to pick out is of course Denmark against China. I think that's a pretty big one. Uh, Netherlands against poor Portugal. Uh, that could already present Italy against Argentina and Colombia against South Korea. This already could decide who will move on. Okay, uh, next point. I want to briefly talk about jerseys and yes, I'm planning to do a jersey review more on that at the end of, of, of the video. But um, I'm very happy that we see now that for the Women's World Cup, the big brands also issue uh, custom made jerseys for the women. With the caveat that Nike, who have 13 out of the 32 teams, <laughs> which is a third more or less, uh, issue full fully new sets, whereas Adidas, who have 10, and both of those together have almost three quarters of all the teams, uh, Adidas having the approach that will take the jer home jersey from the Men's World uh, Cup and then uh, add a specialized women's jersey, except for the new teams, Italy and Jamaica. I think they get the same jersey as the men have currently. I think same go I think goes for Costa Rica. Um, we have other than, than the two big brands, who I said, almost three quarters. We have a very eclectic mix, mix uh, starting from Puma with two teams and all the others have only one. Hummel with Denmark, we have Saita with Haiti, we have Castore uh, with um, Ireland, we have Panama with Reebok, we have Le Coq Sportif for South Africa, uh, we have Grand Sport for Vietnam and we have Copa for uh, Zambia. So I think that is rather exciting to see a whole lot of eclectic mix. However, um, honestly, the mm, dominance of Nike and R uh, uh, did just make it also kind of easy to kind of judge the jerseys. I have to say most Nike, Nike jerseys, I like that they uh, put on sustainability by using Nike grind for the player spec logos, although I'm not sure about all these uh, glitter effects on the logos that, 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 that there looks a little bit weird to me. Um, but most of the Nike teams really, really look boring. Uh, they are all so templated, there's nothing really special in there. Uh, with probably the exception being the Canada home jersey, which for some reason the men are not, are not using. That would be a jersey that I would have. That would I love to have. But most of the others, I have to say, are rather in the boring category. Conversely, Adidas. Yes, they're taking the easy way out by reusing the man jerseys for the home, but for their teams that they uh, signed prior to uh, the start of the of year, they released some really, really wonderful away jerseys with the standard jersey of the tournament, uh, probably being the women's away jerseys with the forest pattern. It's all about nature and, you know, reflecting the uh, uh, ecology of the countries that these teams are come, come from and there are some really stunning jerseys that I think work really better for the women uh, than they would for the men to to us although I would love to, the men wear some of these as well. Finally, what am I going to do for for this World Cup? As I said, uh, the scheduling uh, prevents me probably from um, recording regular videos. And on top of that, I will be on vacation and I probably will not be able to see the semifinals or the other final, which really sucks from my point of view. I, 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 I agree with that. So I've, I've decided while there may be the occasional um, video, like once a week, potentially, I'm not even sure I'm going to do, do, do that. Summarizing how where things are, I honestly think if I talk about the games, I will follow it. But if I want to talk about it, it will be in uh, with short videos. Other than that, I don't think I can hand handle it because that I can even probably do on vacation. Maybe have to choose the jerseys accordingly to take uh, into the vacation 
and then let's hope I have good internet there. Uh, so that's the one thing. Uh, the other thing is I'm planning to do, of course, a full jersey review. It's a little bit harder because to come by with good pictures, especially for the smaller teams, is really, really difficult. So this will be a little bit more eclectic there. I may choose a different thumbnail style, but that's stuff to worry for me and not to worry for you. Uh, eight groups would scream for eight videos. I'm actually toying with the idea of making only four, packing two groups in each video. Uh, and maybe talk a little bit short about the shirt since we have a little bit dull doubling up and since most of the jerseys are already a little bit duller so this might actually expedite the process as well but yeah that's my thoughts on the upcoming women's world cup let me know if you're gonna follow it who do you think will win give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more talk to you soon bye Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!